Meg. Born in 1950, Meg grew up on a farm near Halifax. Meg's family lived in squalor. Her father was a poor farm labourer. When Meg's sister was born, her mum developed postnatal depression and couldn't take care of the house or the children properly. At junior school, Meg's teacher humiliated her in front of the whole class. She ran a finger round my collar, said I was filthy and sent me out to the cloakroom to wash. By secondary school, Meg had a few good friends. Money and soap were still scarce at home, but Meg felt less alone. Meg left school at 15 and got a job in a cotton mill. Earning her own money changed her life. Now she could afford essentials, like toothpaste and soap, to wash her own clothes. She even treated herself to a huge black umbrella. Having a job not only helped her financially, it also allowed her to gain confidence and independence outside of her claustrophobic living situation. Eventually, she saved up enough to buy a smart second-hand bike, cycling to and from work even in the snow. She rested her radio in the bike basket and listened to music on her commute. At 15, Meg started dating Alan. She was allowed to see him on Tuesdays, Thursdays and weekends. There was a strict 10pm curfew. Meg remembers a rare moment of freedom when Alan drove them to the seaside for their first holiday. When she was 17, her father became terminally ill, dying soon after. Life at home had always been tense, but now it became unbearable. Meg's options for escape were limited. In a bid to leave home, she got pregnant, and the young couple moved into Alan's parents' living room. Sadly, her new home was not much better. Alan's mother was a bully. Alan himself was more and more controlling, and their relationship became abusive. Meg learned to drive. She was only allowed to use the car for the weekly shop. Meg would take her best friend Sue, turning what would have been a chore into the highlight of her week. Meg had a second child at 23, and started working part-time after he was born, picking vegetables, cleaning and factory work. She loved being a mother taking the children on long walks and fitting her paid work around childcare. In her 30s, Meg volunteered, then worked in a school for children with special educational needs. She enjoyed this work and decided to build a career out of it. She took courses at her local college, gaining qualifications in health and social care and making new friends. Sadly, her marriage became increasingly stormy. Fearing for her life, she left her violent husband, but this meant leaving behind her teenage children. Meg eventually rebuilt relations with one of her sons, but remained estranged from the other. A second marriage followed, but this was short-lived. Meg now lives with her third husband in a council house on the same estate where she raised her children. Since her forties, she has had several serious health issues, including cancer twice. She now uses a wheelchair and her husband is her carer. Despite her limited mobility, Meg enjoys occasional trips away. She gets great pleasure and a boost to her self-esteem from her role as a treasurer at the local social club.